Greetings. I have returned from my self-imposed November exile to speak to you of matters of church and state. I'm just kidding, this is a video about d and I just thought that sounded cool. Real quick though, uh, this weekend, aka like today, tomorrow-ish, depending on the time zone that you are in, I will be on a live stream organized by the YouTuber Hello Future Me, uh, where we'll be uh, collecting charity donations for the Child Rescue Coalition. The stream is going to be starting uh, around two hours after this video has released. I will put down a link to the stream if that link exists yet. Uh, if it doesn't, you will just get a link to the man's YouTube channel and then you can take it from there. So I am rather deep in the tabletop role-playing space. It's a bit of a love-hate relationship at times, and one of the most striking experiences that I have is just Anglos and people from all over the world complaining about the utter dominance of Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition to the extent that Really, it's the only game that you can reliably get people to play. Like, to the extent where even if you have a group that really, really wants to play a different setting that isn't a Dungeons & Dragons high fantasy type deal, they will just homebrew Dungeons & Dragons to death into something that less than more works. Doing that to achieve cyberpunk, as opposed to, you know, playing GURPS cyberpunk, or The Sprawl, or just the actual literal game system, the name of which just straight up is cyberpunk. I saw this comment, I don't remember it was, might have been Reddit, uh, but somebody went, oh, it would be so cool if you could just have like a cyberpunk setting, but there's like elves and orcs and magic. Now, there are other game systems that have a foothold in the international tabletop RPG pen and paper playing space, like, uh, for instance, Vampire the Masquerade, Call of Cthulhu, uh, Deadlands, Numenera, all kinds of games. But let's be honest, not even massive mainstream franchises with virtually unlimited budgets, like, for instance, Star Wars, have even a shot at competing with Dungeons & Dragons. These are all small games with very dedicated communities that really care about these particular systems and all the worlds that are attached to them. Meanwhile, D&D's dominance is so overwhelming that you have people in the hobby who have been in the hobby for years, who if you say tabletop RPGs or pen and paper games or just role-playing games will not know what you are referring to because the only term that they know for this immense hobby is Dungeons and Dragons. Imagine if all of team sports was just called football because that's the space that we're moving in right now. That is the extent of what's happening. People are so very comfortable with D&D that they just won't even consider the option of of even trying out a system that isn't Dungeons and Dragons. You can barely get them to play different editions of Dungeons and Dragons. The really, really advanced groups play Pathfinder, which is just Dungeons and Dragons, but a little different. To so many people, D&D is all there is. They're not willing to learn a, a new, more flavorful system that works better with the specific mechanics to dig into a setting that they might even be very interested in. They refuse to give up the D20. And let's be honest here for a second, Dungeons & Dragons isn't even particularly good in terms of game design. I mean, it's solid, it's playable, there isn't anything majorly broken about it. In some areas, it's even good Good, and it's certainly a bit versatile, but also it's inconsistent, it relies much too heavily on RNG, the balancing is sort of mediocre at best, a lot of the rules don't make any amount of sense, and frankly a lot of the subsystems that you get leave much to be desired. The reason everyone plays D&D is not because it's the best RPG in the world, it's because it's the most popular RPG in the world. There is a huge dedicated fan base that provides some support and homebrew and tips and ideas and stories and references 
and what have you. And you won't ever have to convince anyone to play D&D, especially if they're a newbie to the game, because it's the thing everybody knows. Even people who actively hate D&D are in at least one D&D game, because you have to play D&D in order to be able to engage with the hobby. For a lot of people, it is literally the only game in town. In contrast, uh, people who actively hate Warhammer, for some reason, they just don't play Warhammer. That it's not a n necessary thing for them to do to play Warhammer. They can just not play it. But there's a notable exception to this rule. One country that staunchly defies the utter dominance of Dungeons & Dragons. Have you ever wondered why so many of these especially smaller systems have so many books that come out only in Germany and only in German. You have supplements, you have, uh, you know, just law content, whatever the format of that is in your particular system. You have novels, you have some ancillary projects. If you look at either of the two German Shadowrun wikis, they are chock full of information maintained by dedicated communities that look into the publications and do proper write-ups of what's happening. Meanwhile, the international Shadowrun wiki, despite having a lot more people potentially able to contribute to it, a lot of the time it's just copy-pasted text from the books. There's some very essential pages that are just completely missing, and the pages that do exist, well, they tend to be rather short. The reason for this is that though the amount of players in Germany playing the game is smaller than the amount of people internationally uh, playing the game, even if you, you know, take out the Germans of that latter group, the market share in terms of money and time dedication in Germany for any individual of these small systems is rather a lot larger. And this is not inherent or exclusive to Shadowrun. This is the case with a lot of small systems. Germans just sort of like to play games that are not Dungeons and Dragons. It's just common here to try out and play other systems, to have multiple systems running at the same time. In fact, if you do not do it, if all you have ever played is Dungeons and Dragons, or any one system for that matter, people will sort of raise an eyebrow and assume that you are very new to the hobby. This isn't because Germans are inherently more adventurous or experimental when it comes to our recreational culture. Stop thinking about porn. D&D still has a dominant market share in Germany. It is huge here, possibly even the biggest game, although I think it only rose to that level of prominence in like this, the recent D&D boom with shows like Critical Role and all that. But it has a competitor, a game that for many decades was bigger than Dungeons and Dragons and which even now still swings in the same weight class. It is called The Dark Eye, or Das Schwarze Auge in Germany. And also there's Splittermond, which ha also has begun existing in recent years and which exists. And also, it's pretty, it's exclusively in German, and they bring out books for it all the time. This is just a very small selection of the books that that system has. The Dark Eye, like Dungeons & Dragons, is a fantasy system. It focuses more on low fantasy, and unlike D&D, it comes prepackaged with a whole bunch of lore. But effectively, it occupies a very similar niche. And for a lot of Germans, including myself, it was our introduction to the role-playing space. It's not better than D&D. D. In fact, let's be entirely honest here for a second, it's not going to win any game design awards anytime soon because uh, it's rather distinctly Teutonic. Okay, so here's how you do basic skill checks in the Dark Eye, right? You have a skill, you take 3d20, right? And then you, uh, the skill has listed some of your base character attributes and you roll the D 3d20 and then you compare the 3d20 to the individual character attributes and if you are below it, you are fine, but if you, if you are above it, you need to check with the level of the skill that you have and then use that number to subtract from your die rolls in order to 
hit that line where you are below or equal to the number that you're supposed to roll on the attribute check. And then at the end, you compare the remaining skill points that you have to a table in order to ascertain how good you roll. Yes, it is in fact true that if you were to propose this idea to any 21st century game designer, you would be laughed out of their office. But it does work, and it does have one major advantage over D&D, for instance, which is that it is more consistent. That is a bit counterintuitive, but it checks out. The real reason people go back to the Dark Eye is not just nostalgia, but also the fact that it has an incredibly deep and detailed and sprawling, gargantuan game lore that has been worked on for many, many decades. No world in all of, like, RPG fiction ever has been this detailed. You have individual slang terminology tables for individual counties and individual regions of individual countries within this vast continent. It truly is a different world. There's also a UFO, but we don't talk about that. But if it isn't better than D&D, how does it compete? And how does it competing make that other games can compete also? Aside from the practice of the game, just sort of normalizing the idea that you can and should play other systems that are not Dungeons & Dragons, there's a dirty little secret to Dungeons & Dragons overwhelming success everywhere else in the world that doesn't apply here. The original Dungeons & Dragons came out in 1974, but they chose not to publish a specific version for Germany, but instead, I don't even think they sold it here, it's just like importers got it and then sold it and people got it from other countries. The reason being that the German-speaking market is big enough to expect localization. They want the rules and all of the other books to be written out in German. Which, you know, as a quick aside that doesn't really have much to do with this, the original Dungeons & Dragons was adapted from, like, miniature wargaming, which in and of itself uh, comes from Germany. Prussian generals uh, used to do this thing called the Kriegsspiel, which is literally war game, uh, where they basically simulated battles with armies and dice on tabletop battlefields. They even had GMs and everything. By 1983, almost 10 years later, Dungeons & Dragons had made enough money that they considered it a good investment to create a localization into the German language, but by this point in time, people here had already played Dungeons & Dragons, and we had our own pioneers of the thing. Because nobody really assumed that necessarily they were going to localize it, and even if they were, it doesn't have to be just one system. That is why in the following year, in 1984, the Dark Eye hit the shelves here in the German market. Of course, there is the factor of the language barrier having blocked out some people from being able to play D&D early on, but the Dark Eye managed to establish itself early on as a competing system to Dungeons & Dragons when everyone in the rest of the world was still dragging their feet. They came out just with within a few months of each other. In other words, the reason why Dungeons & Dragons has such an overwhelmingly dominant market position everywhere else in the world isn't because it is the best role-playing game, it's because it was the first role-playing game, and it has been able to leverage its brand monopoly for a huge snowball effect that just drowns out everything else. The German market is so much closer to the ideal of what a healthy pen and paper RPG scene should be like, where people play a diverse array of systems that actually see time, that you can actually join games in. People are generally willing to try things that don't immediately make them recoil in horror because it's not at all what they're interested in. There is a fluidity to it that I don't think exists in the rest of the world, and I'm pretty sure that the rest of the world sort of wishes it did exist there. And the main reason for this is simply the Dungeons & Dragons had actual competition, any competition, from the very beginning. Think about that the next time somebody refuses to put away the D20, because it, it says so much about 
society. Thank you very much for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, share this to your relevant communities, but do not spam them. Consider supporting me on Patreon or Subscribestar, buying some of my merchandise or my short story collection. And in that spirit, remember the stream for the Child Rescue Coalition on Hello Future Me's channel. I will be there uh, tomorrow at around, I'm not sure, it was like the time conversion, but it's like tomorrow for me, I should be on through halfway through the stream. And in that spirit, see you around, cunts.